Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Have you ever opened the proverbial can of worms and just have them kind of explode all over the place? Well, I'm kind of looking at that right now. Ever since I started the series on anvils and rebound and things like that, the conversation has gone to many different areas, many different points of view. Uh, one of the people that I recently saw this morning commented that the whole comparison between the four different types of anvils uh, wasn't fair because all of the anvils had different mass. And I started to think about the whole concept and question of mass relating to, I don't know, physics. So this is not going to be the same exact experiment that I did before. This is going to be something completely different. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And this is the type of experiment you may find in an average physics class. Who knows? So let me explain the premise and you guys can determine whether or not you want to continue watching. I'm going to do the same exact uh, rebound test with the train rail. And I am going to use the same exact testing instrument, ball bearing, that I used in the previous videos. Then I'm going to do another test with one that's roughly four times the mass. Because it's not just the anvil's mass that you're talking about when you're talking about blacksmith's work. You have a physically moving object, which is the mass in motion, then you have a stationary mass, which is the anvil. Then what I'm going to do is something I did not want to do. I don't have access to a lot of pieces of random rail. I pick them up whenever I see them at the scrapyard. And this rail, whoops, was literally my first anvil. But for the sake of this video, after I do the two tests with the two different size uh, balls, I'm going to take the rail itself and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to reduce its mass by half. And then I'm going to do the same tests again and we're going to see what the exact difference is side by side with two different weights so we can get a better understanding of exactly what we're looking at. Alright YouTube, so here it goes. You are going to witness me cutting my first piece of rail that I used as my very first anvil in half. And this is for nothing more than the benefit of the education and information of not only you guys watching, but for myself because now I'm really curious. Uh, the way I've got this set up, I've got the rail portion itself supported by a couple of shims underneath so this will stay level the whole time. I've got a C-clamp down here holding the base of the rail uh, to the inside of the clamp and then I have a bar clamp for even more support. If this were longer and I had more weight back here, I wouldn't worry so much. But just because that this is kind of lopsided and it's a really heavy piece of material and I am kind of pushing this saw to its limits, uh, I just decided to kind of reinforce the clamping setup to make sure nothing was going to slip or move because this is my only piece of rail and I don't have enough to have a redo if this goes bad. So keep your fingers crossed, see if we can get through this cut. finally off the bandsaw. Uh, I know some of you might be thinking, why on God's green earth did you use a bandsaw that had to take forever? Uh, I could have used an oxy fuel process, but I wanted to kind of make these look nice and neat because I have other intentions for them after I'm done with the video. 
Uh, and granted, yes, a bandsaw does take a tremendous amount of time. Uh, since I started this video, uh, I went out, I had lunch, uh, Verit and I got married, we've had three children together, and our youngest is in college, Go Junior. Um, on a serious note though, uh, one of these halves is going to get passed on to someone I know who is very interested in smithing and comes over here once in a while, hangs out with me and uses my equipment, but really has nothing um, at home where he can practice on his own. So with this, and maybe we'll get together and make him a break drum forge, uh, I'm hoping that he pursues his interest in smithing because he's a very creative individual, and if you're watching, I hope I didn't ruin a surprise for you. The second half of this is going to be uh, cleaned up, painted, and uh, presented as an auction item for an event that I go to, uh, which is a large group of crafters. It's a, it's a medieval recreation society, but there are tons of people who go there who are into all sorts of different things. And this type of an anvil is kind of a, a treasured possession when we can find them. So I'm going to be donating the other half to an auction that benefits that group as a whole. Well, without further ado, let's get this test on the road and see what happens. Well, YouTube, I don't know about you, but I certainly learned something. Um, I really thought that there was going to be more of a difference between uh, the full 12-inch rail and the 6-inch rail. Um, but I do feel a lot better about my decision to cut the rail in half. Now I know that both halves will perform relatively well, almost as good as the full long piece. Um, so I know that I could pass along something that's pretty cool for people to use. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, all of the armchair physicists who try to overcomplicate a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to say in my videos because you helped inspire this video and helped me come to a point where I could put on this demonstration for the benefit of others on YouTube. Now if you are someone who is just starting out, blacksmithing is not rocket science. You don't have to have the perfect anvil, you don't have to have the perfect hammer. Um, will it make your life easier if you did? Yeah, it would. But the first anvil was a rock. The first hammer was another rock. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't wait until you think you've got everything that you need to get started. Just go out and start doing something. And that'll determine whether or not you're passionate enough to continue pursuing this particular hobby. So on that note, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank everyone for stopping by. And until the next video, this has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and I will see you again soon.